back to my YouTube channel. So if you're new here, my name is Olivia and I am a bikini competitor, online coach and posing coach. So welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. Another peak week. Another peak week. Another peak week vlog. So right now I am four days out from the Arnold's. So yes, in four days, I will be stepping on one of the biggest stages out there at the Arnold's Sports Festival in bikini. So I'm doing two classes. I'm competing as junior bikini, and then I'll be doing my open class. So the aim for today's video is to take you through a day on, on prep, on bikini prep during a peak week at four days out. So I will take you through what I'm eating, what my diet approach will be like today and for the next few days leading up to the show. I will take you on my last leg session today. So it's just a pump session, but last leg session and then just upper from now on until Friday morning. I'm competing on the Sunday, by the way. Um, so yeah, I'll show you my food. I'll show you my training. I will show you my posing routine. And finally, if you stick around, which I really hope you do, um, I want to do a little sit down chit chat with you because I know it's been requested and I know I've said I'd talk about it. So I'm finally finding the courage to do it. And I'm going to talk to you about my journey, how I got here, about my first preps, about all my shows getting cancelled, what happened and most importantly which is going to be the biggest part of it is my post-show struggles last year and the history of my binge eating disorder how it got me to a really bad starting position for this prep and how it nearly impacted our decision so we were very close to not even starting this prep and obviously i've completed one prep this year now i've stepped on stage already and now i'm getting ready for the biggest show of the year now it is a little later than I planned to be filming today. So as you've seen, I've already checked in this morning. I've done one hour of cardio and now I've gotten ready and I've decided to do a quick little makeup look just because I have been looking absolutely dead the last few days and I don't wanna scare you guys away. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I've done this morning. Um, right now I'm going to show you what I do every morning. So a big thing, obviously, posing is such an important aspect of stepping on stage. However, it's not even the posing itself that's difficult, especially for me as a posing coach and somebody who loves posing. Um, but the hardest part for me even is holding my poses. So let's say you're in your front pose and you don't know how long you're gonna have to be holding that for. It could be seconds, it could be minutes. Especially if there's a big class, all the girls are doing the routines and you're standing holding your pose. I noticed I had a bit of trouble with that in my last show. Um, even though I did practice stage conditioning, just I need more. Um, there's never enough when it comes to those things. So the big two things that my coach and I have implemented to help me control my midsection keep it as tight as possible now and show day. Um, is first of all the hardest thing I've done this prep and that is cutting out sweeteners um, if you know me you know I'm a big advocate of sweeteners I use them in absolutely everything from coffee to egg whites to even some veg yeah but so they're all gone no sweeteners no diet drinks just plain black coffee um, it's been hard but definitely worth it because my waist has never been so tight um but also what i've been doing now that's something i have been doing in the past however i was never extremely consistent with it you know i always aim to do it every day but i didn't um but between these shows now i've really made it a priority to vacuum every morning so essentially what vacuums are it's an exercise for your inner abdominal muscles so it just helps you control your midsection on stage, especially. And obviously they might only be 
a minor part of what's gonna help you up there you know but at this point i will take any one percent any point one percent of of a difference for a stage so i will show you how i do them now so i usually do them standing up and i usually bend over just to make it that bit easier or just uh, i have my control that way first of all you breathe all of the air out of your stomach so you I just take a nice deep breath in. And then let it all out. And then you're going to focus on bringing everything in and sucking everything in, but not sucking in air, you know? And a good thing to also keep in mind when you're doing it, rather than focusing on just sucking everything in, think of sucking it into the back of your spine and up and i usually just try to hold that for about four rounds of 30 seconds or just as long as i can so i'll show you how i do them now few rounds of that and then I will go make my pre-workout meal and I will take you to the gym with me but before I go I will explain my food protocols for the next few days. what is happening with food today since um, last Sunday which would have been a week out from the show we started the official peak week protocols which usually means the first few days are a fat load so the aim of a fat load is to deplete all your glycogen so obviously fats don't hold water um, whereas carbs do so Obviously, during a fat load, you're loading fats, you're eating more fats than any other micronutrient, so no carbs because carbs hold water. So you basically pull the carbs all together. Um, you drop the protein just a tiny bit to aid digestion and you eat higher fats. Now, to me right now, it's really not much of a difference to what I've been eating because I've been doing zero carb for a very long time just because that's what we needed to do to bring that conditioning and yeah so it's really not much different um, for me just to make it plain and simple on me I know what works well with my body with my schedule I'm very busy I don't want to be spending time in the kitchen making a million different meals so what we've literally done is have the same meals roughly four times a day plus just a little bit of a different meal for my last meal so what I've been doing the last few days is just chicken veg and even the veg I keep the same I cook up a lot of beans and I just keep them in the fridge tomatoes and a bit of lettuce here and there but I try not to rely on the lettuce too much either because I don't want to get my stomach used to very high volumes then to those meals um so up until yesterday i've had a fat source in all of those meals which was usually nut butter or dark chocolate and then my last meal does have an egg egg yolk one so that's still there but so yeah mainly the meals are just chicken and nut butter or chicken and dark chocolate um, right now i do have two meals that don't even have fats in them so one is just chicken and veg and then we pulled the nut butter for my last meal, but I actually do save some from a different meal to put into that one, so we're all good. Um, but yeah, that's what we needed to do just to, I still need to bring that bit more conditioning and it's, it's just what's necessary, you know. Um, normally a fat load would last three days, some people do four, and then followed by like two, that's my chicken done. Um, followed by like two even three for some people days of a carb load so once you're depleted 
you want to fill your muscles back out with glycogen so that's where the carbs come into play unfortunately i just found out um i'm basically fat loading until until i go away i'll only have one day of a carbo which is fine um i know i know it's what i need to do just to bring that conditioning um so yeah that was the news of this morning anyway i'm gonna put my meal together i'm going to show it to you and then off to the gym for the last leg session so here is my meal, literally nothing exciting. We've got 70 grams of chicken, 75 grams of veg, and I've also got 10 grams of dark chocolate, which I kind of have as a treat with my coffee pre-workout. And then here I just have my six grams of salt weighed out for the day. So also on top of the fat load, we've also got water and salt targets, which we've just kept the same it's very important not to be really changing anything at this time obviously the biggest change was cutting out sweeteners but we've done that like two weeks ago now so the goal for peak week until like a day out is to keep everything consistent so when you make changes to food or salt the day before the show and on show day they're actually effective so i've been doing six grams of salt per day weighed out at the beginning of the day and then just put in a little container and spread throughout my meals we're doing five liters of water and that is every single day to keep consistent until we start a water load um day before the show and then as we start pulling water and dehydrating and cutting salt so that's very important too now i'm gonna eat this up and i will see you later welcome to my final leg session we are starting with some abductors to open up my hips i do that for every leg session whether it's programmed or not and that leads into my first proper exercise which is the adductors so with every exercise i'm leaving about two to three reps in reserve here and training 12 to 15 reps then my favorite exercise, the hip thrust, with a million adjustments before I actually get into the movement. Love and hate them at the same time. I clearly don't know what training reps in reserve means and it just feels weird to leave reps in the tank. But we move and we move on to the painful leg extension. I secretly love this and I love the detail that's finally starting to push through there even through the leggings you can see it anyway tempo here is key then we have the leg press or the devil machine I don't think I will ever like this movement but I know how important it is to have this in my plan however I do miss pressing like five plates aside so this does hurt my ego a little bit Anyway, lying leg curls because my hamstrings are shit. Here again, we focus on tempo, slow, eccentric, squeezing the glutes and driving up with a slight pause at the bottom and the top. I have to say the isolations today felt amazing. You know, sometimes we're really lowering the weight and really focusing on that tempo like I'm doing here in a seated leg curl has really shown its effects you know my hamstrings have started to pop through there and i have great mind muscle connection with them now as well and kickbacks uh, this is almost a finisher and notice how i only have a slight bend in the knee and my leg is mainly straight and i'm also not bending into it Leaning forward and keeping that leg straight and we finish off with some calves because we cannot neglect them honeys and then that is that for my session I finish off with my last bit of cardio for the day before I move on to some posing practice
like that. That is the final leg session. I am so tired. I am so hungry. I literally can't even speak. And I was gonna pose, but they were in the middle of mopping the studio. Typical. So I'll either try a pose at home later on if it's not too cold. My house has been freezing. And insert a clip from tomorrow's posing session. So I will see you at home for some food. So it is half past three now and I am finally back home. And I've got my next meal, which very similar to my first one. We've got 70 grams of chicken, 75 grams of beans and tomatoes. And then, as I said, about two of my meals, I still add a bit of lettuce. Just, just keep me that little bit fuller. Keep me eating for that little bit longer because I am very hungry. Um, yeah, it is a little later than I planned to be eating today, but as I said, I this is the only day before the show where I could have slept in a little bit and my body was screaming for sleep. You know, I'm very grateful that I could take another, an extra day off before this show off work because I definitely need it. I still have so much to do. So yeah, I'm going to eat this up. And then you'll either see me at my next meal or when I'm chatting to you guys. So, oh yeah, I've also got another coffee. Just black, no sweetener, no milk. Because if I'm gonna get anything done today, I need one now. Um, however, I do have a limit on that as well. So we're on 500 milligrams of caffeine from either coffee or pre-workout it says my protocols but i don't take pre-workout anyway and now that i've cut out sweeteners as well i definitely don't want to be taking pre-workout because i know they can bloat me from um, all the artificial flavorings in there so i'm just sticking to black coffee five black coffees so this is number three so i need to pace myself <laughs> anyway i'm gonna eat this up and i will chat to you soon So hello and welcome back to my pink chair. You know what? Safe to say I think this will be our chit chat spot for the foreseeable future. I am back home. Everything is done. I've actually started editing this video and I thought this would be the perfect time for me to sit down and talk to you guys. I'm very comfortable. Got my Udi on because I am freezing. You know, I have been very cold the last few days, but obviously on such low food and the body fat coming down uh, yeah can't be avoided you know i mean this is the lowest my food has ever been if i'm being honest this has been a much awaited part of the vlog all the vlogs really um if you follow me on instagram you would know i am very open about what I've been through really, um, you know, how my bodybuilding journey started, what happened after my shows, how I got even got to the shows. So I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to tell you how I even got into bodybuilding. So as a young teenager, you know, like 15, 16, I was very unhappy with, um, with how I looked. I was very unhappy with my body. I was a little, I wasn't fat, but I was a little bit on the bigger side and honestly i hated sports growing up i even hated pe at school um you know anything to get out of it but one time my dad decided he wants to join the gym and i was like you know what i'm gonna go with you and i've kind of stayed there ever since <laughs> so unfortunately and honestly i hadn't a clue what i was doing in there you know my nutrition was still all over the place um, I didn't really have structure to my training. However, I did really enjoy it, you know, and then I kept training and I honestly started falling in love with the gym. It was, at the time, it was therapy. Um, I went through some difficult times in my life at that age and the gym, the gym really helped me. It really got me through some dark times and yeah. That, that's how my journey with the gym itself started. 
However, obviously one extreme leading to another, I started overtraining and under eating, leading to me losing about 10 kilos in two, two, two months, I think it was, when I was about 18, 19. And as a result of that, I did lose my period um, and I just got very skinny. But that was also the time I came across some bikini competitors online i was like hmm that, that's kind of interesting i kind of want to do that so naturally as you do i went on instagram and contacted the first coach that i found um in regards a bikini prep and that's how it started so that was the start of 2020 um i basically jumped into a prep you know i was already very over dieted and I was very skinny and I definitely shouldn't have jumped straight into a prep, especially dealing with some disordered eating in the background. You know, what I do is, how I lost the weight initially was I would severely under eat during the week and then binge away at the weekends. And that turned into something quite extreme. You know, it wasn't just having a takeaway it wasn't having an extra chocolate bar or something it was it was been it was proper binging and i didn't really see an issue with this because i thought i was banking calories in order to be able to do that that person i was being coached by at that time didn't never question that he never questioned my relationship with food um i wasn't even asked about my hormones and 19 20 year old me really wanted to prep you know i was not going to be like yeah by the way i have an eating disorder or um yeah i don't have my period by the way so i can see that which was 100 percent my fault but anyway we jumped into a prep but as i said i was already really over dieted i was like 12 weeks out and i was basically stage lean you know um we got to a point where my body was just burning through food and even though my calories kept increasing, I kept getting refeeds, my weight kept dropping, and I believe that was a good time to pull prep. And blessing in disguise, prep got cancelled anyway. Thank you, COVID. So, 2020, I started three preps. And all three got cancelled because of COVID, you know, it was a very emotional time each time. Um, you know, the first time around, I was very sad. I was very upset that prep got cancelled. And then I was like, okay, it's fine. You know, the next show will be right around the corner. Let's take a little break and dive straight back in. And that happened three times, each time being more difficult and... Between each of the preps, I had anywhere from a week to a month of time off or an off season, which obviously I just binged my way through. Now, the last, the last prep that got cancelled that year. Um, so I heard rumours that prep was going to be cancelled and that was around Easter. And me thinking I wouldn't even have an Easter, which I was completely fine with, you know, but then we got the news that the show in fact is cancelled and I start panicking you know I was like okay I get to have an Easter now I don't trust myself with food I don't know what to do so I texted my coach and I told him all of those issues all of those thoughts that I had how scared I was of Easter and all the food and everything and I got ignored my messages weren't read I got ignored and I spiraled you know, I start binging again and yeah, so I stopped working with that coach. And about four weeks later, I, I really wanted to get back in prep. I really wanted to step on stage. You know, it was, it was the biggest dream I had at the time. And I really wanted to step on stage, you know, having three cancelled preps. And that's still not putting me down. I was ready to do anything to, to finally get to stage. And that was 2021. By then, I came across my coach, my current coach, Michael Geary. Mike Geary. Um, this time around, I did a lot of research before even reaching out to him. Then I 
reached out to him and two days later we were 18 weeks out. Mike and I started my prep for PCA Ireland um, 2021 which was very successful. I have to say Mike and I had an amazing prep together. Everything was structured. There was no off-plan meals like my last coach would let me have. There, you know, it was very strict. It was very structured. And Mike has all the knowledge that I believe a coach needs. But at the same time, he, he was just amazing. The support I got off him throughout that prep. You know, I could talk to him about anything. But even though he maybe had some compassion towards me, he never went easy on me, you know. Which led to the results that we got. I won my first show. 18 weeks of work together and I won my first show. You know, normally Mike prefers to work with a client in an off season first before leading them into a prep. However, you know, I had the experience of being in prep. I was in three preps, all cancelled. It was 18 weeks to the show. I wanted to step on stage. Mike was like, okay, let's do it. That's prep. <laughs> And yeah, so that was our first prep done. Then we went on to finals two weeks later where I came third. And at that point, I was very excited to get into an off season and make a lot of improvements. But then something just clicked. I really struggled. I really struggled this post show. After basically two years of being in and out of prep to then completing a whole prep, my body was very deprived of a lot of foods. And But what really plays with me is emotions. I struggle with emotional eating and that's where my binge eating com comes from. You know, I always turned to food in dark times and post-show, no matter how amazing the season was, I was in a very bad place mentally. I felt very alone. I had a lot going on and I again turned to food. You know, I wasn't very open with Mike at the beginning about my issues either. He knew I had a bit of a rough post-cancelled prep. But that was about it, which was which was also my fault. You know, I should have been a lot more open. But let's face it, I was embarrassed. So yeah, I started binging again and it really got out of control. You know, I mean, I was eating thousands of calories a day. Um, I'm pretty sure I did the 10K challenge at least a few times a week. Um, I was binging on junk food, sweets, chocolate, then, then I started binging on foods I didn't even like. I was eating to the point of feeling sick, to the point of wanting to get sick, you know, I was just eating non-stop and I couldn't, I couldn't control it. I hated the way I was feeling. It was painful, I was embarrassed in the gym, I was constantly bloated. Obviously my performance in the gym wasn't good either because I just felt like crap. Well, yeah, that carried on for quite some time. Um, and I couldn't control it. I couldn't control it. I tried so hard, you know. I took a whole week off post-show to just enjoy myself. And that was probably the mistake I made. I I think I should have hopped straight back on plan. Um, but we didn't know that was going to happen. You know, I had full belief in myself that I wasn't going to let this happen again. But I did. Um, but yeah, we tried to get me back in check uh, plenty of times. So first Mike sent me out a meal plan for me to follow. And I tried my best kept slipping up so I was like you know what let me create my own meal plan give me macros I'll create a meal plan run it by you maybe that will help but it didn't I was gone so deep down that binging hole that I just couldn't stop you know it carried on for months 
I'd have a few days of being good and sticking to my plan and then I would spiral again and it was horrible. It was honestly horrible. And I know I shouldn't be embarrassed because it's not something I could control. You know, I wasn't purposefully overeating or just indulging in food. You know, it was it was painful. I hated it. I felt guilty every single time. I I hated myself. I hated myself for being like that, for doing that. And then the discussions of the next prep came around. Um, we weren't sure if it was even a good idea for me to prep. You know, I, I binged for four months straight and gained over 20 kilos in such a short space of time. I looked the worst I ever have. I felt the worst I ever have. I was embarrassed in the gym. I lived in oversized clothing. It was, it was horrible, you know? But I really wanted to prep and I really wanted to prove to myself that I can get past this, I can beat this and I don't want food to ever control me again. So what we did was we decided I was going to prep. First we did kind of a two week maintenance period where I just tried to get into routine again and I managed to. And then Easter came around, which I was told I could still enjoy and we will be on prep the day Easter is over. So I enjoyed Easter and then we hopped into prep. Now, 20 week prep, starting it over 10 kilos heavier than I started my last prep. So last prep, I lost a total of 11 kilos over 18 weeks. This time I had over 20 to lose. Now, Mike was very, very clear with me. Olivia, one slip up, one, one episode of binging, one event of going off track, you're done. You're pulling, we're pulling prep. There is no prepping. And I was very determined. I was very determined to prove that I can do it and that I won't give Mike a reason to pull prep. And I didn't. I can honestly say I have given blood, sweat and tears into this prep. I have nailed every single protocol to a T. I haven't missed a beat. And I lost over 20 kilos naturally let me add before everybody starts accusing me of not being a natty i am a natty and i plan to be a natty for as long as it's possible but anyway that's a different story so yeah um still in prep obviously <laughs> yeah so i have to say i am very proud of myself for pulling through such a difficult prep you know having the same amount of time and double the weight to lose is is extreme you know it was a very extreme prep we ran no carbs four weeks we did hit the two hour cardio mark but let me tell you it was worth it you know even though i didn't place at my last show and i don't think i'll place at this show either fingers crossed i do come back with some sort of a medal but i won't be mad if i don't because i am so proud of how far i've come this year but the hard work is really only ahead of me. You know, one of my biggest goals this year was to push through this prep, give it my absolute everything, and just be so proud of myself at the end for completing it and doing something so big. But the actual bigger goal is my off season coming. You know, I still have two more shows after this one. But once they're done, so that's mid-October, I will be in an off-season. And let me tell you, I am not letting what happened last year happen again. Because I have promised myself that if I slip up again, if I fall into that binging pattern again, I'm quitting competing. Because I can't keep living like that. I can't be in this constant cycle of 
binging, prepping, binging, prepping because it's, it's, it's not healthy. And even though bodybuilding isn't healthy, that will ruin my life and that will ruin my career. So this off season will really, will really prove what I can do and how much I love this sport. I have to say I'm off to a very good start. After my last show two weeks ago, I was given a bit of an evening off and I asked myself what I'm craving. And if you asked me that last year, I'd be like pizza, burger, cookies. You know, I had a load of post-show treats ordered. They were all in the freezer, binged on all of them after the show. This year, I think I have some green beans in my freezer and a few bagel thins that I brought over from England that we don't have here. Um, but yeah, I asked myself, what am I craving? And my answers are very simple. It was foods I used to have on my plan that I just can't have anymore because I'm on no carbs. So oats, rice cakes, fruit. And that is exactly what I had post-show. I had a few rice cakes with nut butter. I had a big bowl of oats that I couldn't even finish. And that was it. I asked myself, I was like, do I want anything else? And I was honestly like, no. Had my oats, had my kind of Red Bull had my fruit and my rice cakes and went to bed and woke up the next day feeling great. I was ready to push again. My cravings were out of the way. Um, even my cravings this prep really haven't been bad. I'm hungry, yes, but I'm not craving junk, which is amazing considering that I've been eating chicken and beans four times a day. Now, another big challenge ahead of me this weekend is obviously post-show. So I have come up with a plan of what I'm going to eat and what I'm going to do post-show. And I feel like that is something that I just need to do every single time. I need to have a plan in place so I know what I'm doing. Because if there is a plan and if that plan is approved by my coach, I feel like I will stick to it. You know, so like that's what we did last time. I told him what I was craving and he gave me a green light. I had that and I moved on. And this time around, we booked certain places and even though technically I could go out and eat absolutely everything, I actually don't want to. You know, after I step off stage, I want to go have a Nando's. Then in the evening, we want to go for Asian and then a nice brunch the day after. And then I'm back on plan for my next show. And... I'm very happy with that. I'm really looking forward to it. But what I'm looking forward to more is the time that I'll have with my family. I get to dress up again rather than living in work and gym clothes and I get to go out, which is amazing. And, you know, I've already told my coach I'm going to prioritize protein, healthy fats, obviously some nice carbs too from some rice and sweet potato fries and some sourdough bread. My biggest plan is to not really have a lot of treats because I feel like having sweets really sets me up for a bad, for a bad time, you know? But that is, that's quite natural to a lot of people because once you have a little bit of that, it makes you just want it more. So I am gonna let myself have a few bits here and there, but I know I can control myself. And just the fact that I handled my last post show two weeks ago, just has me very hopeful that I'm past the darkest stage of it. And I'm just so excited to get into my off season after this year, get to an off season, enjoy the foods that will fuel me, that will fuel my training, because I want to come back so much better next year. I, this year was about experience, you know, it was about testing me if I can push through a prep like this. It was about dipping my toe into the big world of bodybuilding on an NPC stage, which I have done and I loved every second of it. But as much I lo as I loved every second on that stage, I obviously didn't get the results I had hoped for. So that is what I want to do next year. I want to give this off season my absolute all. I want to make all the improvements I can and step on stage next year, collecting what's mine because I believe it's mine, but in the right time.
which I really think next year could be a very, very bright time for many awards, many trophies. Um, but that all comes down to my actions this coming off season, which as I said, I'm just so excited for, you know? I told you last year, I mentioned that in my last video, last year I spent most of prep obsessing over the food that I can't have. I'd scroll through Instagram, I'd be looking at food posts, I'd be ordering post-show post stuff and I haven't been doing that this year, you know? I basically created my off-season meal plan that I've already run by my coach, which he approves of and I'm just so excited to get stuck in. Once shows are over, I'm so excited to get to work and I feel like that's the mentality of a bodybuilder and I'm proud to have it now. So that kind of sums it up really, you know, this weekend will be a real test for me, real test of my self-control and what I'm really made of. Then the coming off season, you know, I really want to work hard and I told myself if I mess up again, if I fail, like I failed last time, that's the end of being a bikini competitor because that will ruin my life. Simple. And what I've been telling myself a lot over the last few weeks is obviously I want to be a bikini pro. I want to be competitive in the pro league when the day comes. I want to step on the Olympia stage in years time. And in order to do that, I need to think like a pro. I need to act like a pro. So that is the biggest goal for this off season to not just focus on prep and being a good bodybuilder in prep, but being a bodybuilder all year round because it is work all year round. You know, most of you see, you see the ins and outs of prep, but a lot of people don't show you what really happens backstage. You know, what really happens for the rest of the year. We don't just work for 12 to 20 weeks in prep it's it's a full-time job and that is exactly how i'm planning to treat this off season i'm not going to let food get in the way i'm not gonna let food ruin this experience for me and ruin my love for bodybuilding and ruin my future in this sport and you know after after the last show and just considering how i've been thinking about food I really think I'm in a much better spot right now and even in my personal life I'm in a much better spot right now which means less drama, less stress and I really feel like this coming year will be my year so mark my words because you will see all of it. I'm planning to document everything from this prep, from my show days, to everything that happens in my off season. So make sure to stay tuned. I really hope you made it this far in the video. If you have, please give it a like, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any videos. Um, feel free to leave me a comment. You know, I'm sure there is people out there that have gone through the same thing or are going through the same thing. And if you are, just remember that it's not just you. You're not the only person going through this or that has gone through this. You're not crazy. You're not a freak. You know, it's, it's, it's normal and it's very common to happen in this sport. But that being said, it's common, but it shouldn't be happening. And if you are struggling, please reach out for help because it's something that I wish I would have done. I wish I put my pride aside and went to see a specialist. And that is also a big thing. Um, if, if anything ever happens again in my life like this, I am going to get help because it's something I should have done because maybe if I did do it, I wouldn't be in this position, this prep, and maybe I wouldn't have suffered so much. So yeah, if you are going through a hard time, please reach out for help. Um, that could be anything. That could be talking to your mom. 
that could be going to see a specialist or even dropping me a message because my DMs are always open to you guys. And I really hope this part of the video has helped any, any of you. If it has, even one person. If I have helped one person with this video, I'm accomplished. That's all I wanted. You know, I just want to be open about my journey. I want you to get to know me and for who I am. And, you know, this, this thing happened in my life and it's part of who I am or who I've become. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for listening to me. I really hope you made it here. I know um, I talked for a bit longer than I planned as usual, but there was a lot I wanted to get off my chest. And enough of the sad part of the video. I will see you probably in a couple of minutes downstairs because I am starving and it's time to eat again. We'll chat very soon. So I'm all showered and I am back in my kitchen making my last meal now, which, exciting, is different. I have one egg, 75 mils of egg whites and 75 grams of veg again. And that's that for the night really. I'm gonna take that, take my subs with that meal. So another portion of my digest max, some sleeping stuff and a vitamin C, which we've implemented this week as well, just to help shift all that water weight up and holding. So I'm gonna make that now. I'm gonna eat it, show you guys. And then that is that for the vlog. I hope you enjoyed being four days out with me. And next time you'll hear from me will probably be one day out from my show. I'm planning to explain all the protocols, what happens day before the show. And then obviously a show day vlog will definitely be coming up. So I will chat to you soon guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment if you feel like it. If not, that's okay too. And I will catch you in a future video. Good night.